What's going on everyone? Today we are gonna be reviewing and testing this 12 volt portable fridge freezer cooler combo by Bodega. So we're gonna start with going over some of the specs and features and details about this unit. Then we're gonna go outside, test it, try it out. Uh, we'll check the noise level of it. We'll check and make sure how cold it gets and uh, just run through some various tests. Today we're gonna be focusing on the 53 quart because that's the one I have here. And it currently lists for just under 500, but is on sale for about 440. So this particular 53 quart one measures at 18 inches tall, 28 and a half inches long, and just over 14 inches wide. They say you can fit up to 57 12 ounce cans, up to 31 16.9 ounce cans, or 18 750 milliliter bottles. This unit comes with two different power sources that plug into it. Uh, you can either plug it into your 12 volt power outlet in your vehicle, or you can plug it into the wall. You can also purchase separately other types of power sources. Uh, if you have like a generator, you could plug into it or solar panels. None of that comes with this. It just comes with the wall charger and the 12 volt power outlet. The unit itself features a touchscreen panel, and you can also download an app to control it from your phone, which is pretty sweet. They claim 45 decibel, roughly, noise levels, which is pretty quiet. I actually do have a decibel meter, so I will test that today. The compressor that this uses for the refrigeration portion has a three-year warranty on this unit. So this unit does have dual zone control. And like I said earlier, you can control it with the app on the phone. The left zone of the cooler is 30 quarts and the right zone is 23 quarts. You can remove the middle divider section plate and then that will allow you to just use the entire uh, cooler as one zone. This unit also features some pretty cool energy and power saving technology. They say that it can start off, the compressor can start off at a lower uh, wattage or starting amperage because you know when you plug into a car or something you're limited to x amount of amps and by starting at a lower amperage and then slowly ramping it up as the unit cools off instead of just starting at full power is going to keep it from tripping anything and it actually has three different stages of battery protection that prevents your vehicle from running out of battery so when it gets to a certain voltage it will reduce its power draw and if the battery voltage continues to drop it will cut more power until eventually it cuts all the power and then at that point the refrigeration and freezer portion will not be powered anymore it will then be up to just the cooler to maintain the temp that it is until the vehicle is started again and can attain a proper battery voltage. This unit is also fairly sleek and doesn't have any weird formations on it or anything that stick out and snag on anything. So it makes it nice for packing in Tetris style. Uh, if you know, especially if you need to use every little bit of space that you have, it's also supposed to be a silent anti-shake, which we will test again outside. The Bodega car fridge is equipped with a 120 or 240 volt AC and 12 volt or 24 volt DC adapter. And the unit as a whole has a two-year warranty with 24-hour support. So it must be just the compressor itself that is covered for three years, two years on everything else. And lastly, this unit also features an LED internal light to help make finding things a little bit easier, especially in the dark. Bodega actually has two other coolers in this family line for different sizes. We have this one, which is the 53 quart. They also have a smaller 38 quart and a larger 63 quart available. I will post all three of them down in the video description below if you'd like to purchase them online. All three of these products do currently have a four and a half star rating on Amazon. So without further ado, let's get outside, check it out, go over it in person, kind of inspect everything, test a few things, we'll plug it in, and uh, we'll see you know, how long it takes to get up to certain temps and how closely the temps match and all that. All right, so here it is. We've got a latching lid, which I really like. I don't like ones that just push down. Uh, you got a nice little seal in here that seals along this ridge right here to keep the temperature in there best we can. This is our little accessory box that should come with our wall outlet. There's a adapter. So you've got the wall outlet power converter and then here's your 12 volt. And then this is the cord that will go from the power inverter uh, to your wall outlet. And then you have your user manual right here. So this is the freezer portion as you can see here and there is the fridge. You can remove these baskets if you'd like. There's also a drain right here, and you can remove the divider if you'd like. You can see there's just a little channel right here and here that the divider slides onto, and then the drain just pulls up 
and there's two O-rings on it that seal. To reinstall, you just firmly push all the way down until it stops, and that's it. So it's pretty easy to uh, remove everything, wipe it out if you need to for cleaning, or if you need to drain it. And like I said, removing and installing the divider is a snap as well. The lid also features a little bit of a divider right here, so there's the least amount of gap between this and that as possible to help kind of separate the fridge from the freezer temperatures. And then right here, this little strip is our LED light. So I'm gonna put the baskets back in for now. I'm gonna plug it into the wall to try it there. And I'll also try plugging it into my Jeep with the 12 volt after we do it with the wall outlet. So as you can hear here, the lid latches nicely, has a handle on this side and the other side doubles as a handle slash uh, pulling handle. This particular unit weighs in the neighborhood of 40 to 45 pounds when empty. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a shake and rattle test. Now keep in mind, you're gonna hear maybe a little bit of noise from the compressor and the racks are also in there with nothing weighing them down. So this is just gonna get to give you an idea uh, what this empty would sound like bouncing around the back of your car. That's actually pretty darn good if you ask me. And this is the same test, but with the racks removed. You can just kind of barely hear the internally mounted components moving around a bit, but that's not bad. So like I said, we're gonna use the wall plug-in first, and both of the connectors that plug into the cooler are gonna be the same. You'll see there's a little uh, notch cut out right there, and there's a corresponding tab there, so it needs to face this direction. Wiggle and push all the way in, then firmly plug the inverter cable in and then plug this end into the wall. Okay, so here comes the first power up. You can kinda see and hear the little fan going there for the compressor. Pretty quiet so far. Also looks like we have a charging port here, USB charging port, which is also pretty handy if you need to plug like your phone in or something. Here's our battery level display. Obviously we're plugged into the wall, so we have unlimited power. So it just shows that it's full. Also tells how many volts we have coming into the unit. There's our light. Now based on the shapes here, as you can see, there's a square right there. I believe that is supposed to be this section. And then the kind of L shape is gonna be this section right here. So we can change our temp. So we're gonna max it out at negative four, see what happens there. I believe it will accept what we want and then it displays what it's currently at. So we're at 60, we'll remember we're at 60 and we'll watch it drop and keep that closed so it can actually get cold. And let's do the fridge to about 38, well, we'll do 40 because there's probably gonna be a little bit of temperature creep. If the freezer does actually get down to negative four, uh, it is gonna have some energy transfer and so if you have it at negative four and the fridge is set super low, like 35, uh, you might get frozen liquids in the fridge section, which I do not want. So we're gonna try negative four in the freezer and 40 in the fridge. To power the unit off, you'll just hold the power button. It'll cut the display, then the fan. And you can use the little settings cog wheel here, hit that, and you can toggle between Eco, which just kind of draws the least amount of power and only uses it when necessary, or you can have it on max, which is obviously just full bore, max amperage and everything to get it as cool as fast as possible. So freezer's at negative four, fridge is at 40. Currently the fridge is at 66 and the freezer's at 60. We'll walk away, come back after a little bit, see what we're at. Okay guys, it has been 35 minutes and the, as we're speaking, the freezer has dropped to 11 degrees and the fridge is at 37. It does feel like it's getting cool in there. I'll close that and let it go. But as you can see, remember I had this set at 40 and we're below that right now. So this freezer is gonna bring that down a bit. So I'm actually gonna maybe 45 for the fridge and uh, we'll come back in a little bit longer and see if this thing can hit the negative four. All right, guys, we have, oh, it just changed. We had negative four uh, in the freezer and it just went to negative three and 45 in the fridge portion. What it does, it, it took probably an hour and a half to get to negative four, but I saw as low as negative two. I think I saw negative two after only 
uh, like another 15 minutes after the first half hour check. So like 45 minutes to get to negative two and then it cut out for a bit and it came back up to maybe eight degrees. Then it kicked in again and uh, brought it down to negative four. So it cycles on and off. It doesn't just constantly draw, but let's feel. That's pretty cold feeling. This has been in there, I don't know. I, I think I put this in there after the first half hour. So that, that's only been in there maybe an hour. And this is the freezer. Oh, look at that. The cider is starting to get frothy and freeze. Ha! Oh yeah, definitely gets cold in there. And you can feel the difference too. So it does a, a pretty good job of dividing. Let's see how much noise it makes. This is me just talking normal volume. Phone's about a foot away from my mouth and I'm floating between the 70 and 75 decibel range. 75 decibel beep. I mean, you're not gonna be right next to this thing, so we'll, we'll put it like two feet away and it's running the compressor right now. So 48 to 49 decibels. That is a little bit over what they claim, but it's still very quiet. Uh, I don't know how perfectly calibrated this is and we have it you know negative so it's working pretty hard i mean i would imagine on a lower setting it, it would probably be a little quieter but even at the 48 49 still very quiet wouldn't bother me at all to sleep next to it and the fact that we have frothy uh alcohol that was in there at you know negative three negative four and that was only in there for an hour so i mean that's proof right there it obviously gets cold so now we'll take this outside, hook it up to the 12 volt on the Jeep, probably drive around for a little bit while it runs and cools everything down and see how it does with the 12 volt power source. I'll also show you how to hook up the Bluetooth app so you can control it with your phone. I should mention, I also like the wheels on these. It's kind of like a really hard rubber, rubber plastic mix. They seem to be pretty strong and they're fairly quiet on uh, pavement and concrete. So just like the wall outlet, you're gonna line up the groove here with that tab and just push it in all the way. And then we will plug it into our 12 volt. Okay, now my Jeep does not put power to this constantly. The ignition has to be on or it needs to be running. So if your vehicle is like that, then you need to keep that in mind. You can see it's powered up right here and that's because I have the ignition on. Keep that in mind so that when you shut the vehicle off, if your vehicle cuts power, you're gonna have to keep an eye on the temp here because obviously it'll quit cooling when the power is cut. And after I unplugged it from the wall, plugged it into the Jeep, it's actually pretty smart. It remembered the negative four temp for the freezer and the 42 degree temp for the fridge. I'm gonna set the fridge to 40. Also bear in mind any sort of ignition timer, like my vehicle cuts power, even with the key on. If the key's on, it cuts power after like 15 or 20 minutes, at which point it will also cut power to the cooler. Also, as you can see here in the back of my Jeep, there's plenty of room still. Even with my little road box here, uh, there's still plenty of room to put some bags or luggage or blankets or whatever if you go on camping for the weekend, even with the rear seats in the upward position. And again, this is the 53 quart. All right, so we're gonna scan the iOS QR since I have Apple. Download the app, it should be called Car Fridge Freezer. There it is, get. Car Fridge Freezer would like to use Bluetooth. Okay, start scanning. I heard a beep and it says AP for app. So I believe we are pairing. Press settings button on the fridge control panel. Settings. When it says to uh, hit the settings button on the phone, you got about five seconds to hit the settings button on the cooler itself. And you can see right here, we've got 11.5 volts coming out of my Jeep. It's estimating the battery to be at 84%. It's showing the current temp is 37 and we are set to negative four got a power button here to turn the cooler on and off you can also select the other bank and that one is set to 40 and we're currently at 49 you can lock the temp you can unpair it you can switch from Fahrenheit to Celsius uh, turn it on to eco mode and then here's the little settings 
Um, you can set your cutout voltage. So if you want this thing to cut out, like I'm already at the 11.5 volts. So if I click that, it'll cut very soon, but you can select that. And I just think that all this is pretty cool. You can even pull up the user manual in the app so you don't have to hang on to the paper owner's manual. There's a little settings cog wheel button you can click as well. Shows you the minimum temperature, the maximum temperature. You can rename the Bluetooth device if you'd like. Do not change. So you can change these advanced settings, but like it said, just don't mess with it. Unless you have reason to, which I don't see why you would. So yeah, that's that. Now, if you listen real carefully, I just have you know all the volume and everything turned down in here, and I've got the fridge freezer still running, and you can just faintly hear it. It's definitely not too intrusive. Okay, so the Jeep's been running about five minutes while I was just kind of finishing up some things around here. We're down to 29 in the freezer and 30 in the fridge. So I'm actually going to hop in the Jeep and maybe go drive around for a half hour, and then we'll check on the temps and see where we're at. Okay, I've been driving around for about a half hour and we've equalized pretty good here. The fridge was originally way down at 30 and it's come up to 37. I have it set at 40. The freezer is at one degree currently. It is still set at negative four. So I assume probably within another 10, 15 minutes, it would be down to uh, the actual specified values that I programmed there. So this thing's been running basically three hours straight and just feeling it. Um, you know, there's a little warmth, but it's not hot by any means. So, it, you know, it doesn't seem to be overworking, doesn't seem to be any sort of fire hazard or anything like that. So thumbs up there. I think the overall quality seems pretty good. You got the outlet fan here. You can feel the cooler air draws the warmer air out. All in all guys, I think this thing works pretty good. I like how you can control it from the app on your phone. You don't even have to, you know, get up. <laughs> I'm not sure what the range is on it exactly, but either way, it's still a cool feature. Also, once you look at the price, you might initially think that's pretty expensive for what you're getting, but it's you gotta keep in mind, it is more than a cooler. It's a fridge and a freezer. Also, uh, looking at other high dollar, uh, good quality coolers are gonna be in the same price range, sometimes even more, and those ones are just that coolers they don't actually refrigerate or freeze so this i mean you can put frozen vegetables in there or something you know what i mean for camping uh very cool very thoughtful uh like how there's multiple power source choices again i'll post this refrigerator freezer combo as well as the other ones down in the video description below if this video helped you out make sure you hit that like button comment down below with any questions check out my other videos here on youtube and check me out on all my socials as always thanks for watching have a great day